Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's lesson. And our essential question, this is the third installment of our unit on West Africa. And today's essential question is, how did kingdoms and empires rise in West Africa? So I will give you an opportunity to go ahead and write that across the top as your essential question. And then we will move on to the details. So the rulers of the trading centers that we talked about in the previous lesson um, grew wealthy because they collected taxes and they made money off of the goods that they traded. So this continued to make them richer and more powerful. They used the wealth that they accumulated um, to raise an army, and by raising those armies, they were able to conquer other regions near them and therefore increase their power and influence. They also collected tribute, please notice the vocabulary word, from the peoples that they conquered. So they made money, they used the money to make an army, they used the army to conquer other people, they conquered other people and then demanded that those other people pay tribute to them, which is basically, basically a tax you have to pay to your conqueror for your conqueror to be nice to you. Kind of a good system if you're the conqueror. And then these rulers became political leaders and religious leaders. So not only did they want the power over the government and running people's day-to-day -day lives, but they made themselves religious leaders as well. So not only were they making decisions about your day-to-day -day life, but they were claiming to have the power to make decisions over what you believed and how you believed it. So this made them incredibly powerful. And so they performed religious ceremonies to please the gods. So the people, very similar to the Maya, if you remember the Maya from sixth grade, um, the Mayan rulers were seen as both religious leaders and political leaders. So as they accumulated wealth, they accumulated power, they conquered other peoples, and these leaders became extremely powerful. And I'm going to transition to the next slide. So between 500 and 1600 in the Common Era, three great kingdoms arose in West Africa, south of the Sahara Desert. The first is Ghana, which is a country today, although the country of Ghana today actually has different borders and boundaries than the former empire of Ghana. It was right about there where you see the red circle. Uh, today's Ghana is further to the south. There's also the kingdom of Mali. And there was also the kingdom of Songhai. Now you'll notice that they were all in a similar geographic region, but each one was successively larger. So let's go back here. There's Ghana. There's Mali. And there's Songhai. So go ahead and write those down. And then I will transition to the next slide. Um, the king uh, who conquered the territories uh, eventually had to delegate some power. So he might delegate or send a governor to rule a newly conquered region. He can't be everywhere at once, so he chooses people that he trusts to go out and basically run the show in areas that the king has conquered. And those people were called governors. And if they were cooperative, the king might allow them self-rule. So if a place that the king conquered said, you know what, we're cool, we're gonna work with you, we're not gonna resist you, we're not gonna fight back, the king might be nice enough to say, okay, then you, you can choose your own leader, and as long as they work with me, I will allow that to happen. And down below, you see two pictures of the great Mali king, Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa was the name of a great Malian king. I'm gonna switch slides. So let, let's talk, and we're gonna put a T-chart in your notes, so 
Your left side question is going to be, what were the advantages and disadvantages of being part of an empire? And then to the right of that, we are going to create a t-chart. And on the left side of the t-chart, we're going to write advantages. And on the right side of the t-chart, we're going to write disadvantages. One advantage of being part of an empire was that the king provided you protection. Once you were conquered, you became part of his empire, and then it was in his interest to protect you. Um, the armies that the king provided kept your trade routes safe. So if you were trading with other towns and villages that were within your empire, those routes were basically protected. And then the wars between the cities came to an end. Prior to being dominated by one king, these cities would fight with each other, therefore making everything else unsafe. So by being ruled by one king, those wars and conflicts were successfully ended. So these are some very real advantages. However, sin embargo, there were some disadvantages as well. Uh, you had to pay tribute to the king. So you had to pay an extra tax, an extra amount of money, just to say, hey, king, we recognize you're the king. Have some cash. That didn't probably feel too great. Uh, you also had to serve in the king's army. So even if you were not from the king's local town or village, uh, because you'd been conquered, you were conscripted, you were drafted, you were forced to serve in the army. Uh, here in the United States, we have an all-volunteer military. That was not the case back in the day in West Africa. So those are some important factors to consider. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you know what's coming next. You know what always happens at the end of a lesson. You guessed it. I would like a three to five sentence summary at the bottom of your notes. And also, since we're at the end of a unit, I'm going to go ahead and move to the next slide in just a moment. So if you're not ready for that, press pause now. Here are some possible questions you could answer that have to do with what we learned in all three of these lessons about West Africa. Describe the process of how early communities and villages formed in areas south of the Sahara Desert. Explain how towns and cities developed in West Africa. What was the result of better ironworking techniques on West Africa? What does it mean to excavate something? Compare and contrast the rise of kingdoms in West Africa to those in ancient China? Or why was trade so important to the people of West Africa? And I'm going to tell you that one of these questions is going to show up on your quiz coming soon to a classroom near you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Blumendahl checking out till next time here on the Waldo Social Studies YouTube channel.